Hello there, I'm RhinoGT4, and welcome back to the ETCC! It is time for rounds number 9 and 10, our series finale, here at my personal favorite track in the entire world, Mount Panorama, Bathurst, whatever you want to call it. We're in Australia, and we're about to tackle the mountain here in the ETCC. We have a 16-gar grid here for round number 9, and I am luckily able to start on the pole for the second race in a row, so can I repeat uh, my victory at the Nurburgring in the wet, or will someone else get a win? We're about to find out, but before we get started, we have some very serious championship implications here, as points leader Pixbunny is not able to make it the trip to Bathurst, unfortunately, so that sadly will eliminate him from ch uh, any chance of winning the championship. And that will pretty much hand the lead to Prod Force 4 AMG unless he has some kind of problems in these two races and is not able to score enough points. Uh, also another thing is the updated manufacturer standings, which I was not able to bring you at the end of round number 8. Volkswagen was actually able to take the lead from BMW after uh, the Nürburgring rounds by 2 points. And Honda takes 3rd over Subaru, Ford 5th, Peugeot 6th, Lexus 7th and Mazda ringing out in 8th. But enough about that, let's get racing. As we are underway, we have Prod EKR starting alongside me in the Honda. As everybody gets off the line, there's lots of contact happening in the background with cars trying to gain positions off the launch. Prod EKR gets shoved around. Afternoon 7 also gets shoved around. Cars going every which way and sideways, but we mostly all make it through the first turn as we head Start making our way up the mountain here on our first lap. I lead the field with Jimmy T, 1996, running in second place. I run uh, hot on my trail, going for an outside move here into turn number two as I take a defensive line in. Jimmy runs very, very wide, ends up yielding second place to Prod EKR as Harry K5 takes up fourth position and uh, uh, CR27 Gaming. Oh, we have a huge crash uh, in 5th position to CR27 game. Anyways, yeah, we have a huge crash. I was hoping to react to that better, but DJ Yuyuko heading into this corner uh, slows down a little too much for Invisible AK, who's right behind him, to then in he anticipated. Made contact. We have a huge accident that follows as <laughs> Yuyuko just gets absolutely destroyed by everyone. That, that is so unfortunate for Yuyuko. He got so, so much damage. He got hit so many times by so many different cars, and his car just absolutely got destroyed. Another uh, person who sustained damage is Prod Force 4 AMG. I believe he got some damage, as well as other drivers, so, um, yeah. At least we made it past the first couple corners. Turn 3, not so much, but... Very unfortunate for all those involved in that accident. As we go back up to the field with me, I am under hot pursuit from Prod EKR and Honda. As we exit the forest elbow for the first time, Harry K5 gets the elbow wrong and slams it into the tire wall, possibly giving him some damage as well. As we head down Conrad straight and towards the chase, one of the most incredible parts of the circuit. EKR right on my ass here with that the superior top speed of that Honda. I take a defensive line into the chase. We are side by side. I hit the apex on the curb and I'm able to keep the lead. Uh, this was pretty much the story of the race for me. My BMW did not have top speed whatsoever. So heading into turn two and heading into the chase, I was basically a sitting duck and had to play super defense. But I'm able to at least stay in the lead out of lap one in my uh, uh, DJR Team Penske BMW. <laughs> Clearly, as EKR runs wide in turn one into the grass and into the wall, Jimmy runs a little wide on the exit as well, but he's able to keep it under control and to take second place from EKR. So we head down the straightaway, go from uh, to Jimmy's vantage point here. Start going up the mountain over the crest. And into turn two. Jimmy's showing a lot of pace here in his uh, Subaru. Of course, uh, this being Jimmy's home race since he is from Australia. And he's putting on a damn good show so far, running strongly in second place as he's under pressure from EKR. As I say that, 
And we have Azza, uh, who had retired from the race after lap one, or, yeah, who had retired from the race, I believe, after lap one due to accident and car damage from that huge accident involving DJ Yuko. So, the replay just kind of puts his car there in the corner, unfortunately. So we head around the top of the mountain, around the left-handers, and into, over the crest, into the dipper, which is probably the, m one of the most exciting parts of the track for me personally. It's probably my favorite part of the track. Just constant left, right, left, right, down the hill, on the brakes. It's so great. You hear, uh, gets a little wrong this lap, scrapes against the wall. But Jimmy, very good run through the, through the dipper in that section as he head down Conrad straight again. Jimmy looking to close the gap, which he is... It's, it's pretty easy for him to do. That Subaru, pretty good in straight line. Like I said, my BMW, very much lacking in top speed. Wasn't really apparent until we got here in our final rounds here at Bathurst, but... I was able to keep a good enough gap on Jimmy to comfortably hold the lead through the chase. But Jimmy is still in hot pursuit as we head to the final corner to complete lap number two. It is still BMW, Subaru, Honda, and I believe that is a Scirocco in fourth position of Invisible AK. Who is uh, trying to catch up to this pack. So hopefully he'll be able to do that. Hopefully for him, of course, as we head into lap three. So, down this long straightaway. Let's see what's going on a little further back in the field. We have Afternoon 7 running in 5th with Harry K5 in 6th place, not too far behind. I believe we've had many pit stops for repair damage. We have a very heated battle between the Real Meal and Muller Mills 245 for 7th place. As they head down the long straightaway, Ford versus Pojo, who is going to have the legs? It looks like Emil has got the straight line advantage here on Muller. So heading to turn two, how's this gonna go for these two competitors? Emil's able to just barely clear Muller. So he goes hard on the brakes into turn two and is able to stay in seventh place or gain seventh place. I'm not sure where they are running at that time. As we go back up the field to join me and this battle for the lead between myself and Jimmy, with EKR lurking closely behind. Go through the left-handers. This is a very, very difficult part of the track, and you make one small mistake, you're slamming into the wall and damaging your car. So I was very cautious through this section, or at least I tried to be. I um, definitely didn't take very good lines, I will admit. I was not very good around this track. I love this track, but I'm not very good around it. I will admit. It's Jimmy just putting on all the pressure. It looks like EKR lost a wing mirror. Or he ran over someone else's wing mirror. Head out of the elbow. Everybody almost up against the wall on the exit. And here we go. Nose to tail. Me, myself, and Jimmy. Heading down Conrad straight. Move my car to the left. Jimmy keeps his line to the right. And he's using that straight line speed of the Subaru. To try to work his way around me as we head into the right hand kink. Leading on to the chase. I give him plenty of room. And back off a little bit, and Jimmy is able to take the lead of the race. Jimmy T, 1996. Yeah, that's his name, right? Yeah, 1996. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Takes the lead here at Bathurst. And a uh, very, very surprising performance from Jimmy. He's always been a relatively good driver in the series, but never in the top four. Although he did have that good, strong showing at... Um, Nurburgring in the wet, but didn't quite get the result out of it, unfortunately. So we begin lap number four. My BMW has been relegated to second place. So I try to put the chase on Jimmy, but he's starting to build a gap. And I have Prod EKR once again right on the back of my car as we head into turn number two. Nice tight line for everyone involved. EKR running very wide off the exit, using as much of the track as he can to uh, keep his pace up and to maybe go for a move on me as we head around here. Once again, Oz's dead car, just just chilling there. No big deal. We don't need a yellow flag for that. It's fine. I'm 
sun glares on the camera, blinding everyone. Here's some nice shots, though. Normally, I'm not a big fan of the Forza replay cameras, but the ones around here are not that bad as I hit the wall on the last left hander heading towards the dipper into the gravel. And that gives second place to Prod EKR. So, a big mistake from me, trying to hold on to second place. Just turned in a little too much. Clipped that inside wall. And now I am back to third position. So, I try to push, push hard. Try to maybe close this gap on EKR. Uh, there's nothing I can do on straightaway. Meanwhile, there's Invisible AK running in fourth place, who I believe actually had some engine troubles uh, later on in this race, so he was a little bit off the pace, unfortunately. This Jimmy still firmly in the lead. In fact, he's built quite a gap, especially after my mistake at the top of the mountain. So Jimmy pretty comfortably out in the lead. It's good, uh be very well on en route to his first victory and the first for Subaru here in the ETCC in his home race. That would be one fantastic story, I tell you what, if that were to happen. As he comes around to complete lap number four, three laps to go here in round number five. So let's go a little further back toward in the field to see if we can pick up any other battles and exciting racing here at Mount Panorama. It's like everybody pretty spread out, it seems, for the most part. Got Prod Forza 4 AMG not having a good race at all, stuck in 8th position as he heads uh, through the chase, I believe. Yep, that was through the chase. It was a weird camera angle, so I couldn't tell. Through chase just ahead of CR27 Gaming, sporting a new livery this weekend. Very, uh, uh, AE86 inspired, it looks like. A battle for 8th position here, across the line, to be in lap number 5. AMG's car is definitely looking a little worse for wear here as he goes very wide into the grass off of turn 1, trying to make up as much time as he can. Meanwhile, we have Muller in 10th place, scoring in the final points paying position all by his lonesome. And we have a new entrant here for our final round. We have Skippy is cool 394 who is running just outside the points, but... Uh, having a nice smooth race for now and then we have the cars that have sustained damage multiple times throughout the race including boost in ethanol who's actually heading into the pits all over the place trying to uh, make it into the pits in 13th place and DJ Yuko who has recovered from that massive 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 crash on lap one he's going to take 13th place here with that pit stop from boost and then we have racing heart GT in 15th position rounding out the field of cars still running in this race. As we go back to the front of the field, myself and Prada EKR's tires fly over the horizon. I, I don't even know, so I'm still trying, pushing as hard as I can, try to catch that Honda and maybe go for, uh, try to recover second place here again. I had a big game plan because of something I actually failed to mention at the start of this, because I, I really probably should have mentioned it, is, um... Actually, I'll, I'll... Never mind. I'll do some editing magic. Don't worry about it. But anyways... Heading into the chase for the fifth time. Still, a uh, Pretty decent gap here on myself and EKR. Of course, I lost some time down... Conrad straight because of the uh, lack of top speed on my BMW. Even if I'm tucked into a slipstream, I just got nothing for... This BMW just has nothing down the straightaway. Otherwise, it's a really nice car, and I like driving it. Two laps to go here in race number one. As you see, Jimmy has a very, very comfortable gap here out in front. Can't even see him in the camera. You can barely see him way off in the distance here. The mountain for the sixth time in this race. Helicopter flying over by, probably getting some very nice aerial shots of this action. Things have pretty much calmed down. The uh, overall attrition from the first few laps have kind of built some pretty sizable gaps throughout the field. 
has to say, visible AK running all by his lonesome in fourth position with his engine damage, unfortunately unable to do anything about it. We have Afternoon 7, Harry K5, still battling for fifth position. Harry K still trying to uh, keep up and maybe take that spot. Close that gap. I'll have Emil working just a few seconds back in sixth place. Hoping to uh, close in on this battle, maybe become part of it. Go for some extra points. We have Prod 44 AMG still holding on to eighth position, well, well behind Emil. CR27, who has lost a lot of ground to uh, AMG, and then we have Moeller still running in 10th position. Once again, all by his lonesome, so uh, let's rejoin this battle for 5th position here. Those things look to be getting slightly closer as Harry's pushing us forward as much as he can to catch up to the BMW of Afternoon 7. As he head through the dipper. Ooh, Afternoon 7 goes very wide. Into the wall he goes. That's going to help Harry out a lot here as they head down further down the mountain, heading into the force elbow is now two car lengths separating this BMW and Ford. Around the forest elbow, seven <laughs> using up every inch of road, punting a tire that was laid against the wall. That's how close he got. So they head down the Conrad straight, seven going to have to yield position with the unfortunate lack of top speed from the BMW. Yes, he is. He may have also sustained some damage from that uh, smack against the wall. And Harry is able to easily take fifth place well before they head into the chase. Ooh, things got very, very tight there. I think Harry might have broke a little too early. The chase has almost got tail whacked by Seven. Seven elects to stay on the track, so he looks like his damage is drivable, if he has any. So we are on the final lap of the race, let's just rejoin myself, still trying to catch up with EKR here with second place. Gap has been remained about the same, I may have gained a couple tenths over the past lap and a half or so. But still too far away, I'm still pushing hard to maybe try to gain a couple extra points here in my pursuit of an overall podium in the final point standings. But we shall see how that goes. As we head up the mountain, up to the top of the mountain. Cars want to step out. Tires are starting to wear a little bit. Cars not wanting to cooperate 100%. Trying to get the most out of this turn while also staying far away from that wall because I don't, I don't want to touch the wall. A little too deep of a line into this final left-hander. We head to down the cutting. Is it the cutting? No, it's the dipper. What am I talking about? The cutting is like the left-hander before the dipper or something like that. I don't fucking know. I don't exactly know all my corner names here at Mount Panorama, I will say. I act like I know what I'm saying, but I don't. Heading to the forced elbow for the final time. Still too large of a gap to EKR for me to do anything with him, unfortunately. We head down the long Conrad straight, just losing more and more distance to EKR. Second place, falling ever further from my grasp. So it's now just about bringing it home in third position, pretty much. Let's head into the chase for the final time. And I turn in a little too soon and hit the tire wall on the final, almost the final corner. But I'm able to very quickly recover, and since I have such a huge gap on Invisible AK, I'm able to hold on to third place. Didn't sustain any damage from that, but... Oh boy, that was a that was a big scare for me, as we see AK catching up. But I'm able to bring it around the last turn, and I'm going to come home in third place. But more importantly, the winner of the race, Jimmy T, 1996, scoring his and Subaru's first win of the ETCC on Jimmy's home turf in a very very strong performance an incredibly strong performance from Jimmy an amazing race from him in my opinion and let's take a look at our results of race number 9 Jimmy T 1996 takes the win 7 seconds almost exactly over prod EKR in second place I ended up rounding out the podium in third getting my second straight podium so 
Didn't get a win, but I got another podium, which is cool. Invisible AK finishes fourth place with his engine woes. Harry K5 finishing in fifth place. Afternoon seven and sixth. The real Emil comes home in seventh. Prod Force for AMG after his struggles on lap number one, being involved in that huge crash, finishing in eighth. CR27 Gaming in ninth position and rounding out the points. And the top ten is Mulder Milch 245. If we look at the rest of the results real quick. Let us move on to the point standings with one race remaining. Pix Bunny is still holding on to the lead after a poor performance from AMG in race one, but only by three. So if AMG is able to finish better than, or is he, if he's able to finish seventh or better in this last race, he will take the points lead. Visible AK is also very close, now only five points back. I am now 11 points back, so I can even leapfrog picks money with a good enough finish in race number 10. Prod EKR holding on strongly to 5th position, 57 points back, so he's pretty much comfortably in 5th. With Jimmy T leapfrogging his way from 8th to 6th with his victory. And there are the rest of your standings, so that will conclude race number 9 of the ETCC. Join us tomorrow for the exciting finale of our first season of the ETCC here at Mount Panorama. You're not going to want to miss this. Stay tuned.